molecules are groups of atoms which are held together by covalent bonds. So it could be an element, for example, um, O2, because it's got the same type of atom, Cl2 or H2, or it could be um, a compound, so two different elements chemically bonded together, for example, water, ammonia, or methane. Okay, so these are some examples of simple molecules. We've looked in a previous video about how these atoms are joined together by covalent bonds. And these covalent bonds between the atoms in these molecules are very strong. So what's keeping these molecules together are strong covalent bonds. But these molecules have no overall charge. They're not like ions in ionic bonding that have charge. These just share the electrons. They have a complete outer shell once they've shared their electrons and therefore have no overall charge. And this means that one of the properties of them is that they cannot conduct electricity. Okay, so this is because they have no overall charge. These simple molecules can exist as solids, liquids or gases. Many of them at room temperature are gases and they have, compared to other substances, low melting and boiling points. And I always use um, oxygen as an example of a simple molecule to help me remember that they have low melting and boiling points because oxygen is a gas, just like all of these, in fact, are gases at room temperature. And I like to think that if they're a gas at room temperature, then that will help me remember that they've got low melting and boiling points because if they're already a gas at around 20 degrees C, which is approximately room temperature, then they must have boiled at a temperature a lot, lot lower. I'd like to take oxygen as an example of this. It has a boiling point of minus approximately minus 183 degrees C and a melting point of approximately minus 219 degrees C. So really low melting and boiling points and that makes sense because if this is a gas at room temperature which is approximately 20 degrees C then the temperature at which it went into that gas must be a lot lower than it is. It's minus 183 degrees C. So you can liquefy oxygen and you can solidify oxygen, but you have to go to extremely low temperatures to do so. Whereas something like an ionic compound structure, for example, salt, so this is not a simple molecule, this is ionic, okay, so not a simple molecule. Just for comparison, this would have a boiling point of around 801 degrees C, so a really high boiling point. So simple molecules have a really low boiling point, minus 183 degrees C, relative to um, something like an ionic compound structure like salt, which is solid at room temperature which has a really high boiling point. So this bit of extra content is for the higher tier and you need to know about something called intermolecular forces. And that means inters like between, okay, between 
and molecular like molecules so this means between molecules and you need to know that in simple covalent molecules the intermolecular forces are very weak so for example if you had O2 represented here by two O's and another O2 molecule acting as a gas so we've got our O2 molecules here represented by two oxygen atoms and the double covalent bond and these covalent bonds are very strong so these keep the molecules together with strong covalent bonds but as well as those there are intermolecular forces between the molecules so weak forces that act between the molecules and these are called intermolecular forces between the molecules but these are very weak so when a substance melts or boils it is the intermolecular forces that are overcome and not the covalent bonds and that makes sense because if we had the oxygen molecules closer together trying to represent it as a liquid here okay so this is representing the oxygen as a liquid there would be intermolecular forces between the molecules and all we are saying is it is these intermolecular forces that are overcome when a substance melts or boils. So I'll put when a simple molecular substance melts or boils. So in this case, I'll just re represent it when it's boiling. You've got these weak intermolecular forces between them. And it's not the covalent bonds that break. Because what happens is that you then still have these strong covalent bonds. But it is the weak intermolecular forces between them that are overcome to allow it to change from a liquid over here into a gas. And that makes sense because it's still O2 over here and it's still O2 over here. It's just changing state from a liquid to a gas. So you need to know that when it melts or boils, that it's these intermolecular forces that are overcome and not the covalent bonds themselves, as well as understanding that the covalent bonds are strong, whereas the intermolecular forces between the molecules are weak.